Dungeons & Dragons is a tabletop role-playing game that has been around for nearly five decades, having been created in 1974. It allows people to get together to create worlds, adventures, and friendships while playing it. The latest edition is Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, or D&D 5e. In this edition, as well as others, there are several classes you can play as, each with a plethora of abilities to strengthen them. With each class, assumptions have been made about each one, both good and bad. In this series, I'll be going over each class in the 5th edition Player's Handbook to discuss the class and some positive characteristics about each one. So, as you can see, we're going to be talking about bards. Uh, I pulled it up on D&D Beyond, just so we can look at it together. Uh, using a magic learning, you know, creating a bard, all that good stuff. This is the artwork in the official player's handbook, by the way. I love it. Like, all the D&D books have really nice art. Uh, so, reading here, true bards are not common in the world. Not every minstrel singing in a tavern or jester cavorting in a royal court is a bard. Discovering the magic hidden in music requires heart study and some measure of natural talent that most troubadours, troubadours and jonglers lack. Okay? So creating a bard, they thrive on stories, uh, the arts, music, some of that. Uh, whether the true or not, uh, that's up to you. Uh, so when creating a bard, uh, the backstory, it may be in their childhood, it may be recent, you know, like really anything. Charisma is their highest stat, or should be, since that's what they use to cast spells. And as you can see, in terms of spells, you'll know two cantrips, and have two first level spell slots, uh, but you'll know four spells. Then it just goes up from there, all the way up. 20th level will or where you'll know a lot of spells. Uh, so, in terms of hit dice, you get 1d8 per bard level. Uh, hit points at first level is 8 plus your constitution modifier. Then at higher levels, it's 1d8 or 5 plus your con. Uh, for proficiencies, you get light armor. Uh, you get simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. Uh, you get three musical instruments of your choice. Uh, for saving throws, you get dexterity and charisma, and for skills, you get any three of your choosing. So you can build it however you want. Because I know that others, uh, they kind of require you to choose specific skills. But no, there's three of any choice. Uh, for sorting equipment, you get, you know, outside of your uh, background. Uh, Choice is one, you get a rapier, or a long sword, or any simple weapon. Uh, choice B, you get a diplomat's pack, or an entertainer's pack. For choice three, you get a lute, or any other musical instrument, so just any instrument really. Then, last one, you get leather armor and a dagger, so you're not just doing nothing. Uh, for spells, like I said, they use... Uh, charisma. Uh, for spell slots, it's shown on the spell slot table. Uh, cantrips, they can use any, you know, any ones that they know as much as they want to, really, so long as they can. Uh, for their spell casting ability, their spell save DC is 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier. Then your spell attack modifier is your proficiency plus your charisma modifier. Ritual casting. Uh, you can cast any bard spell you know as a ritual if that spell has the ritual tag. For the spiritual focus, uh, you can use a musical instrument you know, as a spell casting focus, which I think is cool. Uh, now on to the actual abilities for a bard first one is Bardic Inspiration. You can basically inspire others, your allies, uh, through string, through words or music. Uh, 
to do so, it is a bonus action. On your turn, to choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet who can hear you. That target gains a bardic inspiration, which, start, which starts as a d6 or a six-sided die. Uh, it only lasts about 10 minutes, so the so your ally will have to use it in that 10 minutes. And it's on any roll, any uh, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. It makes, which is cool. So it's not just limited to encounters or ability tricks. It's really anything that they would roll with a d20. So I think that's really cool. Uh, but it, they must decide before the DM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. That's the one stipulation. Uh, and when, once the Bardic Inspiration die is rolled, it is lost. So, yeah. And they can only use one at that time. So really you're not gonna inspire them more than once at any given time anyways uh, you can use it up to the number of times equal to your spell casting not equal to your charisma modifier uh, minimum of once and you gain any expended uses at the end of a long rest uh, now they do increase like it becomes a d8 at fifth level uh, a d10 at 10th level and a d12 at 15th so they get more and more powerful as you uh, go on next up is jack of all trades starting at second level you can add half your proficiency bonus round it down to any ability check you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus which is kind of cool because when you think about it if you go back up to the table uh proficiency bonus uh Starting at 17th, you can add 3 to any roll. And you can add 1 to any roll to begin with, which is not bad at all. Uh, then back down, Song of Rest. Beginning at 2nd level, you can use Soothing Music or Oration to help revitalize your wounded allies during a short rest. Uh, if you or any friendly creatures who can hear your performance regain hit points at the end of short rest, by spending one or more hit dice, each of the, those creatures gain an extra d6. Uh, then it increases a d8 at 9th level, a d10 at 13th, and a d12 at 17th, which is not bad. Like once you finish a battle and you take a short rest right before the uh, big bad evil guy, you can easily just use this and let everyone heal an extra die. Right. Uh, then the Bard Colleges. At third level, you can go into a bar called your choice. Today, I'm just going to go over the College of Lore and the College of Valor. Uh, so, going on, expertise at third level, choose two of your skill proficiencies. Uh, it is doubled for those two. That's insane. Uh, every class gets an ability score improvement. They do. Uh, you can either choose one of your uh, ability scores and improve it by two, or you can choose two and increase it by one. Uh, so if your charisma isn't already maxed out, you can max out through this at various levels. Uh, font of Inspiration. Uh, beginning when you reach fifth level, you gain all of your expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a short or long rest. So this, it just kind of helps you regain all of your inspiration. Uh, at the end of a short rest. Normally you would finish it at a long rest, but this one, if you use them all in the previous battle and you take a short rest, you gain all of them back, which is super helpful. Next up is Counter Charm. At 6th level, you gain the ability to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind-influencing effects. This one uh, basically, you use your action to play some music, or sing a song, or do something. And you and f your allies, within 30 feet of you, have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Uh, they have to be able to hear you to gain the benefit, though. And it ends early if you are incapacitated, silenced, or voluntarily ended. So, just be weary of that. Uh, next up... Expertise. 
Uh, Tentum, you choose two or more of your skill proficiencies. No, you choose two more. Sorry, I spoke there. Uh, and it's doubled for that one, for those two. Uh, then Magical Secrets. Uh, by 10th level, you have plundered magical knowledge from a wide spectrum of disciplines. To choose spells, choose two spells from any classes, including this one. A spell you choose must be of a level you can cast, as shown on the Bard Table or Cantrip. Or cantrip. Uh, the chosen spells count as Bard spells uh, for you and are included in the number of spells known column of our table. Uh, you learn two additional spells uh, from any classes at 14th level and again at 18th. So this is one of my favorite abilities of the bard. You can choose just through this effect up to six by 18th level up to six spells from any other class which is insane. Like bards are really great spell spellcasters for this reason because they can learn such a plethora of spells like by later on. Uh, then Magical Secrets. Uh, at 14th level you have Plundered Magical Knowledge. Okay. 14th and 18th is just going over them again. Then Superior Inspiration at 20th level. When you roll Initiative and have no uses of Bargain Inspiration left, you gain one use. So, I'm not gonna lie, it's not the best uh, 20th level ability, especially when you have the, where'd it go, where'd it go, font of, font of inspiration, when you can regain all of them after a short rest. But it's there. Uh, then College of Lore, then College of Lore. This one is really about just gaining more knowledge, uh, being better at ability checks, just more about uh, knowledge and ability checks really. It's not more so encounter based, so much more, or not so much more battle based, but more a uh, charismatic encounter based when you're talking. Uh, first one, uh, bonus proficiencies. When you join College Lore at third level, you can proficiency with three skills of your choice. So this, along with your basic skills, along with every other one, so you are one of the most proficient classes in all of me and D. Uh, cutting words. Also at third level, you learn how to use your wit to distract, confuse, and otherwise sap the confidence and competence of others. So this, when you see your opponent uh, making an attack roll or ability check, uh, uh, bef after they roll, but before you know it succeeds or fails, uh, you distract them with music or by saying something. You roll your part of inspiration die and decrease their number by what you roll. So it's just super easy to try and save you or one of your allies from an attack or just make sure they don't succeed at what they want to do. Additional magic secrets or magical secrets. Uh, at 6th level, you learn two spells of your choice from any class. Same thing at earlier, but this one, like like I said, you just gain a lot of spells. Then, Peerless Skill. Uh, starting at 14th level, you uh, when you make an ability check, you can expend one use of Bardic Inspiration. Roll a Bardic Inspiration die and add the number roll to your ability check. You can choose to do so after you roll the die. For the ability check, but before the DM tells you whether it succeeds or fails. So you're just rolling to try and increase your ability check. Like if you're trying to deceive someone and you need it to work, you can easily just roll your bardic inspiration die and add the number. Uh, for the College of Valor, since for some reason they don't have it on DD Beyond uh, for that free one. But here we go. Uh, they get bonus proficiencies, but in a different way. And when you join a third level, you gain proficiency with medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. Kind of allowing them to be more on the front lines as opposed to almost purely uh, support, you know? Then uh, they also get combat inspiration, where uh, 
a creature that has part of inspiration from you can roll the die and add the number roll to a weapon damage roll it just made. Alternatively, when an attack roll is made against the creature, it can use its reaction to roll the Bardic Inspiration die and add the number roll to the AC against that attack. After seeing the roll, but before knowing whether it hits or misses. So, you can either add the number roll to damage you make, you or your allies make, or add it to AC to you or a creature, you know, so long as they have the Bardic Inspiration die. It's just cool to either do more damage or uh, get bonus AC. Uh, they also get an extra attack starting at 6th level. Uh, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn, which is cool. Uh, all the, I know all the martial classes have it, like Barbarian and Fighter, but it's cool to see Bart get it. Uh, then lastly, they have Battle Magic. At 14th level, you have mastered the art of weaving, spellcasting, and weapon use into a single harmonious act. When you use your action to cast a bard spell, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, obviously, you would talk to your DM, DM about you know doing some wacky stuff like this, but I think that's cool. Uh, but with that, I think we're done. I think we are done. So, uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, comment down below which uh, class you'd like to see next. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay frosty, my friends.